All right, so it's a Saturday morning, still in St. Moritz. Yesterday was session day. Yesterday was a bit misty. Looks really cool on the drone. We got the bus to a place called Chiavena. I think it's Chiavena, it might be Chiavena. The point is you drop from higher altitude to lower altitude and that allows you to, it's not, you can run a bit quicker, but the reason you can run a bit quicker is because there's more oxygen available so you recover faster at the end of a rep. That sounds not strange, but like I'm talking slowly about that, but I'm trying to make it make sense. That's probably not a phrase, but basically at high altitude, there's less oxygen available in the air. But where you sort of feel it the most is when you finish the rep and you try to recover. During the rep, of course, there's less oxygen, but you're just in that zone, in that moment, you're kind of just flowing with it. The big sort of like tell is when you, re you recover or you finish the rep and you go, <gasps> and there's just no oxygen there for you to recover and then hit the same pace in the next rep. So we went down to Chiavena. The goal was to do some VO2 max. The other reason that you go down lower when you're doing a harder session like that is because hopefully it won't take it as much out of you. And that's kind of the goal of training that I'm trying to push on this channel is that what you're trying to do in training is get the biggest benefit for the least input. And that allows you to then recover quicker, it allows you to be less fatigue over the sort of week of training, month of training. And it's not all about just every day that hardcore grind mentality. It's about carefully well-planned training with a strategy to give you the benefit you need, but not set you back for two weeks because in running, it's really all about what can you do the next day? Okay, today was great, but what are we gonna do tomorrow? Okay, tomorrow, pretty good, but we still need to go run Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You get the point. It's, it's a collective of everything you're doing not just one-offs. If it was just one-offs, there'd be a lot of very good runners. And that's the difficult part is because you have to spread that motivation, spread that sort of like robustness, not getting hurt across weeks, months, years to get good. The bus journey down, not so bad. The bus journey back, you're just starting to get tired. It's a maybe a 90 minute to one hour 40 bus journey, but that's still a luxury to be able to go down and do that without needing a rental car. So, and it's also beautiful, like Chiavenna is beautiful. The whole bus journey down is pretty beautiful. And yeah, it really helps make training that little bit easier. Yeah, it's a fun thing to do. It's a cool thing to do. Cool when you get there and you're training on the track. Yesterday was Olympic day and you're training on the track with the Olympic champion. I had just done a video on what the Ingebrigtsens do. This is kind of like silly and cheesy, but I got on quite well with the Ingebrigtsens. I trained with them a little bit in Sierra Nevada. I would have no idea. Jakob is so bloody good now, but the fact that he'll remember me and be approachable and easy to talk to, really like that. But he trained, yeah, really good. It, you know, he looked really good and it's always fun to be humbled and share the track with people that are getting it done, putting in that hard work. The session itself was 3K, it actually ended up being 2.8K at threshold, only because I left the lactometer like at 2.8K and not round at 3K. Had I gone to 3K, I'd have had to jog a bit and that would have affected the lactate. That was just nice and easy, just to kind of get warmed up and keep the lactate, like we talk about, right around two, so that it hasn't moved. It would be two at the end of the warm up. it's two at the end of that threshold, it's not moving. It was windy, and I mean really windy, I'm kind of pissed off, Strava said like six miles per hour. It was not six miles per hour, it was like gusts and blustery, and that made the 600s, the next part of the session, a bit hard work. So it was supposed to be 10 600s, the plan was to start to move into that sort of like VO2 area. I haven't done VO2 in about two weeks. I did a video on that. It was a good video really explaining VO2, but I find that even in marathon training, even in that base building phase, when I'm working on that sort of like VO2 area, it just pushes the other speeds and efforts forward, both in terms of pace 
and how they feel. Not just how they feel from a physical perspective, as in like, of course, if I'm running faster, well then slower speeds might feel easier, but just that heart rate and effort, probably RPE, rate of perceived exertion, it just feels easier when your upper limit of how hard you've pushed in the last two weeks is harder. If the hardest you've pushed in two weeks is like threshold or tempo, well then it's gonna be difficult to find those efforts easy because that's your upper limit. If you've been pushing hard at VO2, suddenly the effort that you're putting in a tempo or threshold just feels a bit easier. I knew the wind was annoying because I did the first 200 in like 31, and then I think I ran like 35. <laughs> no, I think it was 31.5, and then I came through 400 in like 67. That's not good. <laughs> so it was bloody hard work. Um, so I did the 600s, I ended up doing eight, and the reason I did eight is because when I checked the lactate at number eight, it was a little bit high. It was like, I think it was nine, and I would have wanted it to be like, maybe like 7.8 maximum, between six and eight. So nine was that little bit too hard. And then what I was able to do was just do some 400s a bit quicker. We've talked about this before, if you drop the, the rep length, you can actually go a bit quicker for the same effort. And then some 300s quicker again. The reason I did that is because if you're gonna, I could have slowed down, but because of the wind, the amount I would have had to slow down would have been substantial, as in a lot, to get the like lactate back to where it should be. Once you've gone over the lactate, it's very difficult to get it back. So instead of running 97, 98, 99, I honestly might have had to run 145. Now, at the start of the session, had I gone 142, 141, then I probably could have kept it in a good place. But once you've kind of gone a bit above, the good thing was that I felt good, even though the lactate was a bit high. I don't really give a shit about that because I felt really good in my style and, and with the lactate that I was generating. Like I didn't feel out of control. I felt heavy and I felt tired, but that's just altitude. That's a week of altitude, double run, sleeping at altitude, it's hard work. What I wanted to tell you there was, I changed the session for the last sort of two 600s, because if you're gonna check something like lactate or heart rate, and it tells you something, and then you don't make a decision, either slow down, change the rep length, only if there's something negative or sometimes positive. So let's say the lactate was too low, four and a half, five, and I needed to go a bit quicker. Well, then you go a bit quicker. Because it was a bit high, the decision was either slow down or change the rep length so that you can maintain pace, and then you have to prioritize what's more important at that time of year. With me racing that 5K, what became more important was speed, right? And so you change the rep length, you run a bit quicker, and you can maintain that speed of the session, but hopefully that lactate will either stay the same or even come down a little bit. That was a decision made. When you just drop down from altitude, you don't, it doesn't feel like sea level. Your body can't adjust that quickly, but like I said, the recovery is that bit easier. So it was a good day, good session, Chiavenna is lovely. Learn something from that. Learn that sometimes you have to make little adjustments. I always try to get the bulk of the session done. So did the 3K or 2.8K, did eight of the 600s with the rest that it was supposed to be. If you start checking lactate every two reps, you're not gonna do your 200 meter jog in 70 seconds. You're gonna be there two minutes, it's, it's too much. So I got the bulk of the session done, and then I thought, good time to check that lactate, because I knew I was working a bit hard, especially into the wind. The, the rate of perceived exertion into the wind, that's where the lactate was creeping up. It was stormy, it was tough. But it was a good day. Know that making the right decision isn't always like a, a weakness or a, a negative. Sometimes you just have to make a good decision. Good day, came home, lots of recovery stuff, working on that nutrition. I've really tried to be better with nutrition. I was eating two loaves of bread a day. Um, yeah, lots of crap, you could probably say. And then I think you just feel like crap. So yeah, really trying to dial in the nutrition, which is like rice, salmon, veg, avocado, just things that you bloody look at in your plate and you go, yeah, I'm gonna feel good tomorrow because I've ate this. 
not two donuts after the session. I was loving it. The donuts were so good. The chocolate waffles were so good. But I just, yeah, I've, I've seen people like Jakob training, being in this high altitude environment, it's just inspired me a bit to be like, you're in a good place. Let's fucking make this happen. Let's actually make this Olympics. Let's not let it just be an idea. Let's do the things that it's going to take. If you want to learn more on that kind of stuff, like recovery stuff, foam rolling, yoga, I've got back into all of that, back doing my yoga, back doing my foam rolling, back doing my band work before I do runs, the activation routines. All that stuff's on the website, joggingroom.com. I can't cover all of that now, but do check that out. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, do all those lovely things, and I hope you enjoyed that session.